Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. So there's an exam in nine days and a, a few hours. So then um, today uh, there's some keys that, that are a few days late being put up. They'll all be put up as well as scans of your graded things. They'll be put up very shortly. Um, the exam is on Monday, two Mondays from now. So not two days, from, not three days from now, but three plus seven, so ten days from now. Okay, so the exam is ten days from now. Um, any questions about that? So it'll be in a large lecture hall. I'll inform you what hall that is next week. In particular, it's not in this room, and it is also not in the testing center. And it, and it is at 7 p.m. at night, mm. and that is the time, and there's not another time. Mm. Okay, good. So any questions about that? Yes? When we finish, can we leave, or do we have to stay? You, when you finish, you can leave, but you have to stay for at least 30 minutes. Okay. Oh. 75 minutes. <laughs> other questions? <clears throat> okay. So today is the seventh, I think. Okay, and last time, uh, last time, what, where did we leave off last time? <coughs> okay. Good. So now, uh, I'd like for you to consider the following <coughs> situation. So one, two, three, four, A, B, C. So here's domain and range. Now I'm going to do an arrow function. So A to there, or sorry, one to there, two to there. Uh, three to there, and now I'll say four to B. So is this a function? Yes, it is a function. What makes it a function? Right, from the domain, from the domain there's exactly one arrow leaving each, each uh, position. So that makes it a function. So now I have a question. What if this is actually a big building and you're standing here on the exit side okay, and you observe an A come out? Do you know for sure what was put in? What, what, was, what was surely put in? A three. Nothing else could have been put in. The si uh, a similar thing is true for uh, C. If you observe a C come out, then a 2 must have been put in. Nothing else could produce a C. Mm -hmm. Now, what if you observe a B come out? You don't know for sure what was put in. Because what could produce a B? A 1 or a 4. So if you, if you saw a B come out, you wouldn't know if a 1 was put in or a 4 was put in. You wouldn't know for sure. Another way to say this is, is let's turn the machine around and point it in that direction and consider the arrows to be pointing the other way, so pointing that way. Is it a function going this direction? No. It isn't. So there's one arrow leaving A, that's good. There's one arrow leaving C, that's good. But now there's two arrows leaving B. So it means it means it's not a function pointing that direction. It is a function pointing that direction, but not that direction. Okay. <clears throat> so what we want is we want to be able to, uh, well, let me give you a, a counterexample. So now, one, two, three.
So now, is this a function? Yeah. Yes. And if you turn it around the other direction, is it also a function? Yeah. Yes. And the way you can see that is that if you're standing here on the output side, if you, if, if you observe an A come out, do you know what was put in? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it, it, it was a, a 2 must have been put in. That's the only way you can reach an A. So then, in a sense, you could say, well, I'm going to push that A back through, and then on the other side, a 2 would come out. And the same is true of all of these. No matter what output you observe, you know what the input was. So this thing, this thing is a function both ways. It's a function in the way we drew it, and it's also a function if you turn it around. So what we want to do is we want to give a name to such functions, because they're important, okay, and, and discuss various properties of, of such functions. Okay, so any question about this? Okay. <clears throat> so such, such functions that can be, that are functions going both directions, okay, are called one-to-one. Uh, -one. <clears throat> so this is the definition of one-to-one. Or injective. So these two these two things are synonyms. However, uh, the wh and what it is the reason why both of them exist is because. Uh, it, it mainly depends on where the mathematician you're talking to was trained and, and what they're trained in. So there's a large group of mathematicians who are going to call it one-to-one, -one, another large group that are going to call it injective. So uh, they're synonyms. Now, your book says one-to-one, -one, so I'm going to try and say one-to-one. -one, but the fact of the matter is, is that in my brain it's not one-to-one, -one, it's called injective. Okay, so when I get excited or something, uh, talking quickly, I might say injective. But I'm going to try to say one-to-one. -one. <laughs> Okay, uh, a function f uh, is called one to one when f of one equal to f of x two f of x1 equal to f of x2 implies x1 is equal to x2. So now this is, this is typical of a math definition. It's exactly correct, but honestly a little bit opaque in its meaning. So, so let's try and put this in plainer language. So this is saying, consider, consider f to be a machine. And, and, and let's say that you run the machine twice. You run the machine with input x1, and then you run it again with input x2. And if, and if you, the output is the same both times, then it must have been the case that the input was the same both times. So what this means is that the output is the same implies the input is the same. Okay, so now, <clears throat> suppose that this, so one, two, three, A, B, C. Okay, and this, we'll call this F. <clears throat> okay. 
And so what I want to ask you about this is consider, let's say that this machine is being run over and over and over again and you're standing over here and maybe every minute it produces a new output. Okay, and let's say that the first observation you make is that a C was put in. And then, and then, okay, that's fine. And then you wait another minute, and then out comes another C. So that you saw, you saw C come out twice. Is it, is it what must have been put in the first time? One. What must have been put in the second time? One. There's no other way you could get a C. So if you see C come out twice, then one must have been put in twice. So this is an example of a, of a rule that's one to one. Because, uh, well, because of the things I just said. So here's a different rule. Okay, so now, is this one one to one? Why not? Right, well, that, that's not a phrase. But I, I suppose you could make one up. So, so, suppose you're standing over here and it's a building and you're watching, you're watching the things come out. Okay, and let's say that we've got our friend with a walkie-talkie and they're over here. Or, or they just know what was happening. So su uh, suppose your friend put in a 1, then what would come out? A B, but you wouldn't know that because they're not sharing that information with you. And then suppose that they put in a 3, what would come out? A B would come out, but you wouldn't know that. So you'd see the same output come out twice. You'd see a B come out and then another B come out. Was that achieved with the same input? No. So this is not 1 to 1. Not one to one because if we call this rule f, if we call this rule f, then what we have is that f of uh, three is the same as f of one because they're both b. Yet three is not one. Yes. So this is for case like a function, mm -hmm. and we're saying that if you have like. Um, Like you have like the same input, you have the same output. No, output. no, no, no. Other way around. Sorry, if you have different. Same output. Same output. Implies the same input. Because if you put the same input, you'll always get the same output. Oh, okay. Right? If you put a one in and put another one in, you'll get the same output twice. The, quest, the question is the other way around. What if you're on the output side and you observe a B come out? and then you observe another B come out. Must it have been the case that the same input was provided? No, because you could have given a three and then a one to get to a B. But couldn't you have like different input and like same input at the same time? That's what, that's what this is. Different inputs, one and three, oh, okay. are producing the okay. same output. Okay, so how about this one? Now let's consider f of x is x squared. So now we're not doing arrows, we're doing functions defined by expressions. Is this one to one? So is it one to one? No. Okay, but if you tell me no, you have to give, you have to just like I said, well, this one's not one to one because if you put a three in, you get a B, and if you put a one in, you get a B. Yet three and one are different. Right. So let's consider. What if what if you consider this machine 
machine that does this. It takes your it takes your x and it produces x squared like this. What if you put in what if you observed a 9 come out? What could have been put in? A 3 could have been put in. Also a negative 3, right? Cuz 3 squares to 9 and negative 3 also squares to 9. So what we're saying is that f of negative 3 is the same as f of 3, right? The outputs are the same, yet the inputs are different. So it's not 1 to 1. Okay, how about how about f of x is three x minus two? Is this going to be one to one? Let's think about it for just a moment. So suppose that, suppose that you saw a 10 come out. Mm. Suppose you saw a 10 come out. What must have been put in? A 4. Right, because 3 times 4 is 12, minus 2 is 10. Is, so if you put a 4 in, you'll get a 10. And, and my question comes down to, at least for the moment, is if besides 4, is there anything you could put in so that a 10 would come out? No. So now, this is, this is not how you answer this question. So the question is, is this 1 to 1? Now, this is not how you answer the question, but this is how I'm going to motivate how you answer. So suppose that f of x is 10. Okay, so then that, that would mean that we're talking about 3x minus 2 equal to 10. So can you figure out what x would give you that? How? What x would, would give you that? Well, you add 2, right? And then what? Divide by 3, and you get 4. Is there any other solution? No. Why, why is there surely not any other solution? Because these operations were truth preserving. Yes. That's why. There can't be any others. Okay, now that, that only says something about 10. We need, to, we need to know about every conceivable output. So, the, so this, this is just the idea. This is not how you answer the question. The way that you answer the question is like this. You say, okay, let's consider that we run the machine twice. Once with input x1 for, for some unknown x1, and once for input x2 for some other unknown input x2. So let's suppose that we do just this then I can replace the left-hand left -hand side by f's expression. So what do I replace the left-hand side with? 3x1 minus 2. And what do I replace the right-hand side with? Right, 3x2 minus 2. So these, this, these 1s and 2s are subscripts. So, and by that I mean the first input and the second input. So now let's simplify this equation. So what can we do? Add 2 to both sides. How about that? Now what can we do? Divide by 3. Divide by three. And so now I claim that you should be able to tell me why we have established whether or not this function is 1 to 1. Right. So let's, let's parse out the meaning here. So this is saying, this is saying, 
supposing that the that the out supposing that the outputs are the same. That's what the first equation is saying. What's the last equation saying? The, the, the last one is saying that the inputs are the same. Now what's happening in between the first and the last? So everything that happens in here, this is all truth preserving. We've preserved the truth the whole time. So this means implies. The output's the same, implies the input's the same. So what's the conclusion about this, about this function? It's one to one. Okay, now, I'll admit that this probably feels a little technical. Okay, so my, my uh, response to you is that, okay, that's good, it is a little technical. You're, you're gonna be asked about it in homework. Okay, but the more common question, uh, the kind of thing that you're gonna be tested on on a quiz is something that's far easier to handle. So, and it, and it has to do with what does a what does a one-to-one -one function visually look like? What will it look like with your eyeballs? Okay. So I'm gonna, this is, this is a proposition I'm leaving unnamed for the moment, but it is uh, a way to visually determine if a function is one to one. Okay, so rather than just tell you the punchline, let's look at the two examples that we gave on the previous page, pages. So we did two examples. The first one that we did was x squared. And what was our conclusion about whether or not x squared was 1 to 1? We said it was not. We said it was not. And what, on what basis do we say it is not? Why do we say it wasn't? is that we found two outputs that were the same. So nine is nine, yet the inputs, negative three and three are different. So nine is reachable in two ways. So let's look at x squared. So we might say, okay, here's a nine and here's a nine. That's height nine. Height nine, height nine. What input gives you that one, that point? Three. What input gives you that one? Negative three. So what we're saying is that this, this height, this output value, of nine was reachable in two ways. So if you saw a nine come out, you wouldn't know if a negative three was put in or a three was put in, you wouldn't know. Okay, so then the second one that we did was, was f of x is three x minus two, three x minus two. And if you were to plot it, it looks something like this. And before we did the algebraic, you know, gymnastics, 
we, we, we checked a specific point. We checked output 10. And we said, well, if the output is 10, then the input was certainly what? Was certainly 4. So then what we said was, OK, to get this output of 10, it must have been the case that the input was 4. There's no other way to get a, f a 10 to come out besides putting in a 4. So who can, who thinks they can say the punchline? So what's the punchline? <laughs> okay. So the idea is that, okay, let's consider horizontal lines. Let's consider horizontal lines. This horizontal line intersects twice. Okay. This horizontal line represents an output. And every, every intersection represents a, an input where it's achievable. So how many, for this horizontal line, how many inputs can produce this, this output? Two. And for this horizontal line, how many inputs can produce the output of 10? Just one, because there's only one intersection. Now I want you to imagine now that we've mobilized this horizontal line and I wiggle it up and down and you could watch the, the intersection moving. How many intersections will there be wherever I place this? Just one. So the horizontal line test is the following. So the name for this, yes, is the horizontal line test. Good, we'll talk about that in a second. So the horizontal line test is if every horizontal line <coughs> intersects the plot zero or one times. then uh, so let, let's be clear if every horizontal line intersects the plot of the function z zero or one times then the function is one to one Okay, so let's have some examples. So we're going to do four examples. And the instruction is determine whether or not, I'm going to draw four things, determine whether or not it is uh, a one-to-one -one function. So the question, in each case, for each drawing, determine if it is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, how about the top left? No. no. Yes. No, it's not. No. Now, wait a second. I have a concern. So you're telling me it's not? Well, wait a second. What about this one? So look. 
I mean, look at this horizontal line. How many intersections are there? Just one. Just one. So is it one to one or is it not? What, what, what is it? <coughs> so what, it, what is the horizontal line test? Every horizontal line. Every horizontal line. So what I did is I, I said, well, what about this one? It's only one time. Okay, and then your response is that it has to be true for every horizontal line, not just your favorite one. Right? All, all of them. Okay, so do you see that, for example, this one intersects twice? And you can make it even worse if you move further down. You could make three intersections. Okay? So there's two intersections, and therefore it's not one to one. Okay. <clears throat> Any question about the top left? Okay, how about the top right? Okay, now wait a second. I'm, I have a concern. So I think what you're saying, part of what you're saying is this, is that consider this piece that's in the top left there and consider that horizontal line and that intersection. So if I was to grab it and then wiggle this horizontal line around, do you see that everywhere in this region there'd be one, just exactly one intersection? Okay, so that's okay. But I, ha I have a concern because what about this horizontal line? How many horizontal how many intersections does this one have? But what what about this one? Zero or one. Zero or one. So the fact that the fact that this horizontal this horizontal line has no intersections, what does that mean about this function? It means it's not part of the not that, the other one. It's not part of the range. It's not part of the range. That's fine. And then down here, similar story. How many intersections for horizontal lines down here? Just one, right? So do you observe that at, you could imagine the conceptual device where we're moving a horizontal line up and down. Way down here, how many intersections? Zero, and then when I get up here, one, and then when I get in between them, yeah. and then when I get on this one, mm. and then when I get up here, yeah. zero. Do you observe that there's always zero or one? Okay, how about this one? Okay, so this one is not, is not bounded. It goes, it goes all the way up. That's the meaning of that arrow. What I'd like for you to observe is that, well, no matter where you put it, do you observe that there's always one intersection? Oh, we need to write the conclusion for this one. So the conclusion for this one is that yes, it's one to one. And what's the conclusion for this one? Yes. Yes, it is one to one. Okay, how about the bottom right? Yeah. It's not one to one. Why is it not one to one? It's not a function. So we have two line tests, the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. Which someone th what what is this one that we're talking about? The horizontal line test. Would someone please remind me what the vertical line test is? Right. Is a test to see if a relation is a function. <coughs> So you draw a relation, and the vertical line test tells you whether or not this relation is a function. 
And then what is a horizontal line test? If the function is one to one. So why is this not a one to one function? It's not a function in the first place. It's not a function in the first place. So it's certainly not a one to one function. So this one was kind of tricky, right? Because I, I drew something where every horizontal line has, one in, has zero or one intersections. But it wasn't a function in the first place. So it's certainly not a one-to-one -one function. It would be just like me saying, it would be just like me saying that here we have, this is a red apple. Isn't it? It, it is, right? Look, it's red. So it's a red apple. What's wrong with this? It's not an apple in the first place, right? So here, it, it is red, right? That's, it's red, so it's, therefore it's a red apple. Right? So that's the same thing with this. Every horizontal line crosses it zero or one times, so, so it's a one-to-one so -one function. No because it's not a function in the first place. Good. So everybody okay with these? Okay. <clears throat> so, given given a you know, I could give you an exercise now where I just draw a whole bunch of a whole bunch of relations. And I could say for every one of these relations, determine whether or not the relation is a function and whether or not the relation is a one-to-one -one function. So what am, I, what am I asking you to use on such an exercise? Vertical the vertical line test, which tells you what? If it's, a function. if it's a function, if the relation is a function. And supposing it's a function, you must go on to do what? You must go on to use the horizontal line test to determine if this function is one-to-one. -one. If, if, if it doesn't pass the vertical line test, then what about the, the vertical? No. <laughs> if it doesn't pass the vertical line test, then what about the horizontal one? You don't have to do it at all. It's irrelevant. It would be like if I was asking you, if I was handing you objects and I wanted you to check, is this a red apple? And I handed you a textbook. Would you consider whether or not it was red? No. Because it's not an apple in the first place. Right? Good. <clears throat> okay, so now another thing that we that we need to know uh, is the following. Uh, families of functions. Families of functions. So the first is lines. Okay. So these are the constant functions. This first this first drawing will be the constant ones. And they look like this, f of x is c for some constant. So for example, f of x is 3. So how, when you draw a constant function, how will it look? Uh, uh, like this. A horizontal line. Because what it, what it means is that, well, if you had, if you had such a function, and you put in 10, what would you get? You'd get 3. What if you put in 0? You'd get a 3. What if you put in negative a million? You'd get a 3. Doesn't matter what you put in, you're always going to get a 3. So when you draw such a thing, it looks like this. So the constant functions are horizontal lines. Input is the x and the output is the y. 
Exactly. In inputs are x and outputs are y's. So then we have sloped lines. So these look like this. So f of x is mx plus b. And such an example would be something like 2x plus 1. Okay, such a function would look like this. So a line which is sloped. <coughs> okay. So there's even another kind of line. What other kinds of besides horizontal and or, yeah, besides horizontal and sloped lines? There's vertical lines. Am I am I going to include vertical lines in my list of of functions? Why not? Not a function, right? Would a vertical line pass the vertical line test? <laughs> Probably not, right? Because because if you right, how many intersections would there be? Infinitely many. That's that's about infinitely too many, right? Okay, so not included. So now the power series of functions. So now we need several. So I guess I'll do like five of them. Okay, so the first one, oh, that's bothering me. I gotta, I gotta erase that. It's a little better. Okay, so the first one is just x. So f of x is x. Now this is a straight line of slope one that goes through the origin. So that's what that one would look like. So now the next one is going to be x squared. And we don't usually write the exponent when it's just x, but to be clear, I'm going to write x to one. Okay, so now how does x to two look like? Right, it's the parabola. So now I'd, I'd like for you to observe that there's a notable difference between these two. So this one, on the left side of the axis, it's below, and on the right side of the axis, it's above. So below means what? Negative. It means negative. And so this one is above on the left and above on the right. So that means that it, it doesn't put, <coughs> output any negative things. Why doesn't this output any negative things? Because you're squaring. Okay. What about this one. Can this one output negative things? Yeah. Yes, because if you square, if you cube negative 2, well negative 2 times negative 2 would be positive 4 times another negative 2 would be negative 8. So this one looks like this. And so in that sense it is like the line because it's above the axis on the right and below the axis on the left. Okay, then we have x to 4. So which one will be x to f which one will x to 4 be more like? Will it be more like x squared or cubed? Be more like x squared in the sense that it's going to be al always above. Why is it going to be always above? It's um, right, because when you raise something to the 4, you'll get, uh, it'll have to be non-negative. So now, it's like the parabola in that way. But there is a notable difference mm -hmm. between x squared and x to 4. And that is that it's flatter near the origin. As if someone took a parabola and sort of hammered it 
near the origin and flatten it out. And on the left, and it's steeper away from the origin. Okay, now x to 5, how will it look? It'll look like x cubed in the sense that it'll be 1 up and 1 down. But it'll be like x to the 4 in the sense that it'll be really flat. And, really, and then really steep. So even flatter and steeper than x cubed. And then this pattern continues, right, following the parity of the exponent, even or odd. Okay, so, okay, that's all the time that we have for today. So have a nice weekend. Stay dry. Yes. I can't.